the end of 1991, we were kind of reconvened to start writing the next album, I suppose. And I think it was Keith, actually, he said, instead of just making an album as usual, why don't we release a series of singles? And it was like one of those moments where you think, you know, once you've had that idea, you can't not do it because it's such a great idea. You know, we'd make all the sleeves match and it'd be a, a set that people can collect. And it just appealed to the kind of collector mentality in me, I suppose, as well. It must be quite organised, I always feel, you know, that uh, because when he does stuff, it's always very tidy and on time and kind of neat. And, and you know, there's a, there is a kind of, I hate the expression train spotter, but there is a kind of slightly train spotterish element to him. We share the record with Elvis Presley for the greatest number of hits in a year. Although I must say, all our hits are brand new songs, where some of his were actually re-releases. So if you strictly want to go with new singles out in a year, we hold the record for that. By the way, sorry for calling you loose. But look who you chose to seduce. I can't go none of those things I said were true. I can't always understand the words anyway, so I don't always know what they're about. Mm. But they do always seem to be about relationships. I'm just fascinated with the way people talk to each other, and what they say, how they say it, why they say it. They're not all autobiographical. There'll be a little bit of David in every song. There's not many that are about us. How does any songwriter get its words? You know, I think a lot of it's in the mind, isn't it? A few of the ideas have come from, you know, newspaper articles or books or films or, you know, literally I've, I've heard people on the bus, you know, you know oh, what's going on over there? And a little argument and, uh, and somebody will say this great line and I think, that's a song title there. He never fails to find a new angle on a relationship and that's what his songs are about. But I must fall in love with you. In 1996, the wedding present did a, a lot of touring. I think we did like three American tours and European tours and stuff. And then 1997 came, we started again. And for the first time, actually, since I'd started it, I felt a bit jaded and I felt like a break. That was strange because I hadn't been in the wedding present that long, so I was kind of the new kid and I was really, really keen. But I didn't really see it from their point of view. They'd been doing it, you know, for years and they wanted to rest and David wanted to try something completely different. I actually thought, well, rather than sit at home and watch telly, I'll actually try and do something on my own for it for a while. And I had this growing interest in uh, soundtracky type music like John Barry and Ennio Morricone and stuff. So I basically decided to put the wedding present on hold and create Cinerama, which was uh, initially a vehicle for me and Sally, really, my girlfriend at the time. And after just him thinking about it, well, both of us thinking about it for a long time, we decided to, to have a change and involve me in it. And we kind of brought people in to, to play, you know, the various other parts. So it's like a duo. I thought it'd be dead easy. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll do a bit of string arrangement and I'll get you know some brass on there. It'll sound great. And it, it took me longer than I thought to actually master the process of because uh, people go to you know university to do string arrangement. And here's me thinking I'll buy this you know top and new computer and I'll, I'll be you know I'll be I'll be away. And so it did take me a while to learn how to do it. It was a bit odd to you know suddenly hear David Gedge's voice next to all these strings and stuff, where it's normally you know abrasive guitars. Well, it's I was I always think that's quite a bold thing to do in a way. It does indicate a certain strength of character and also it indicates really that you're more concerned about the music that you're making than you are about image or uh, reputation or um, the financial rewards or otherwise to be derived from doing what you do. As I took a dive in popularity with Cinerama, I'll, I'll be the first to admit. So I think the people who were actually coming to the concerts were kind of the Wedding Present fans who were up for the change in sound. But by and large, I think they accepted it you know, very well, and I'm, I'm very grateful for that. After a while, we started incorporating some better present songs in the set anyway, because I, I started to miss them, you know. It's one of those things, I've not done it since 1997, and suddenly I thought, actually, these, these are quite good records, if I say so myself. And I suppose as Cinerama was becoming more rocky anyway, and less keyboardy and whatever, it seemed a natural thing anyway, so... 
the two kind of merge together to a certain extent. I had the opportunity to go and live in Seattle for a year and a half. I split with Sally and I've been going out with her for a long time, so I felt like I had to get away from it really. And just, uh, I, and to be honest, I always thought I could do my job anywhere in the world because all I need is, you know, a guitar and a piece of paper and a pen really. I thought, why am I in Leeds? There's no physical reason for me to be here. I mean, I suppose the wedding present was always based here, but now we're with Cinerama, Simon's in Germany, Terry's in California, Carrie the drummer's in. Uh, London, but he's from Finland, so he could go back to Helsinki any time, you know. In the wedding present, it's like four lads who live in six mile radius, and it was dead easy. <laughs> and now it's like, do we have a rehearsal? Okay, we'll fly Terry in from LA, and you know. It's not that difficult. It sounds much worse than it is. When we, we don't have to practice that much as a band anymore, because when we know something's coming up, we all get together for a couple of weeks beforehand, or a week, and it usually works out okay. To write songs, I mean, I write on my own at home, he writes wherever he is. And we usually come together maybe for a week just to sort through each other's ideas. And it's kind of a quite a good way, it's much more relaxed. We kind of filter each other's ideas really. I'm interested in American culture and I think Seattle is my favourite place in America to live because it, it, it's kind of, it's not quite as American as, you know, it's, it's quite alternative. It's, it's, it's a very, it's almost European in some respects, but it's, it's left wing and it's, it's, it's culturally a bit different. I'm sure I miss my hope. But I'd live with you anywhere I have fallen away When I finished Torino, I was finally completely satisfied with, with the record. It's definitely the best Cinerama record. It might be, even be the best record I've made, I don't know. But it's the sound of Cinerama, finally, after seven years. And the writing perceptibly changed from that point on. And I think the seed was planted there. And you know, through the writing and the arranging and then eventually the recording, we decided, actually, this is not a Cinerama record, this, this is a wedding present record, and especially because Sally left Cinerama after, after Torino as well. So the whole kind of duet thing uh, had ceased to exist as well. It's the obvious time to have a wedding present thing going again. It's kind of what I'm into as well. I mean, I, I like David's diversions into the world of strings and pop, but it's not my speciality, if you know what I mean, so it, was, it felt a lot better to do this record this way. A lot more guitars. When you've got it settled, just give us the big chords from the end of Don't Touch That Dial so we can balance the... We got the Our working process is, is, is pretty much the same. We hire a big studio to get the good live sound with the band, do any overdubs we can, wherever we, we can. So far it's been great. Well, I mean, the producer is picked because we think we want a certain sound, so we've already decided how we think the record should sound. And in this case, it was Steve Fisk doing a, not a grungy, but a very guitar-y record, and that's what we wanted. That's sweet. I think the sound of this record is very interesting, it's very dark and it's, it's quite weird in places but I like that, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a challenging record rather than a straightforward pop record. I'd be very interested to find out how the public reacts. <laughs> I don't know. Clearly there'll be those people who remember the wedding present and will think, wow, a new wedding present album, whereas people who got into Cinerama think, what the hell is the wedding present? I think it's scandalous that, that we're not, I'm not a megastar, to be honest. I think uh, I've made us ten fantastic albums, and uh, I don't think we've, we've ever quite achieved the commercial success that we're, we're, we're due, really. I don't really know the extent, you know, what sort of commercial success they've had, you know, and again, how you quite measure that. He probably makes a decent amount of money out of doing what he does, and uh, he's managed to go on doing it for a very long time, and uh, to me that's more important. 
that's the game, you know, it's a, a lot of it is luck. And so, I mean, you know, making a, a great record, is, as anybody will tell you, uh, is a very small part of actually being successful. The fact that he's managed to, you know, go on doing what he does for such a long time, I mean, there aren't many people whose music has survived financial success. And I defy you to give me the name of a single person who's become very, very wealthy and who still makes good records. It's having millions of pounds spent on you, it's having the luck to be in the right place at the right time, it's having the right sound for the current fashion in this country. And it's, uh, you know, looking fantastic and having a pop star kind of attitude, which I'm not sure I do any of that really. <laughs> so.